okay hello welcome to my channel now in this video we want to solve this uh, limit question from the 2022 uh, je advanced math questions right so we have f to be a real value function from the real domain and g is a real value function from this uh, interval from alpha to positive infinity f is defined as the sine of pi over 12 times its input while g is defined as um, two times the whole of that right so we are asked to determine or to find the value of this limit the limit of the composition of f and g as x tends to alpha from the right right so well let me just put down what we have to solve because we have to do this real quick all right and let me pause and say if you enjoyed this video please do what to subscribe to my channel and you'll get similar content like this all right so in fact let's see what we have so we have the limit as x tends to alpha from the right of f f is said to be sine of pi over 12 times its input so in fact we just read, write this down as sine of pi over 12 right times its input well the input in this case is g of x okay that is what f does so let's see um this is the same thing as you notice that sine is a continuous function for every real number as its input that tells us the sine of pi or uh, over 12 times g of x the limit of that can be written as the sine of all right pi over 12 times the limit as we approach alpha from the right of g of x so that means since this is a continuous function we can take it out of the limit of notation and of course this is just a constant multiple with g of x since it's the constant multiple we can also take it out of the limit notation and g of x has a 2 so i would definitely also take 2 out of the limit notation but we just have to first of all evaluate this limit as x tends to alpha from the right when we are done with that we are going to put it inside here right in the domain of the sine function and then we are going to evaluate it after so the first thing we have to do is to take the limit of g of x as x tends to alpha from the right so let me just put that down the limit as x tends to alpha from the right of g of x where g of x gives us two times the natural logarithm of so i will just decide to use ln of x all right ln of whatever ln of the square root of x minus the square root of alpha all right we divided by what well, this is the ln of uh, what we have there is e to the power of the square root of x all right minus e to the power of the square root of alpha okay that's very nice isn't it okay so let's see what we have well you notice that um the basic uh rule or the basic technique of evaluating a limit is by substitution so we just have to see where our x approaches and then we see what we have if we do just a substitution a direct substitution so as x approaches alpha from the right you notice that if you substitute alpha in place of x we're going to have x will be approaching alpha from the right okay the square root since the square root is an increasing function on the real line that tells us that the square root of um as you approach alpha from the right the square root will be approaching the square root of alpha from the right so we are going to have the square root of alpha from the right minus the square root of alpha the difference will be approaching zero from the right and the, the natural logarithm of zero from the right is going to be approaching negative infinity so in fact the numerator will be approaching negative infinity as x approaches alpha from the right let's see where the denominator will appear will approach sorry so as we approach um as x approaches alpha from the right the square root of x approaches the square root of alpha from the right and then e to the power of the square root of x will be approaching e to the power of square root of alpha from the right if you now take the difference the difference will be approaching zero from the right and then the natural logarithm since the natural logarithm function uh, as we approach zero from the right it approaches negative infinity will be approaching negative infinity okay so in fact that tells us that this right here will give us an indeterminate form of the form infinity over infinity and when we have that we can apply the L'Hopital's rule real quick and that is to say we can differentiate the numerator and denominator and then take the limit again so this limit will be the same thing as uh permit me to put these two out front so you're going to have this the same thing as two times the limit okay as we approach x from alpha from the right of um the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator so we differentiate the natural logarithm of a thing okay let me put this fraction line uh, fraction line uh, i used to forget the name anyway when we differentiate the natural logarithm of a thing it will be one over that thing Okay, so we're just going to put that uh, whatever we have the, at the bottom uh, minus the square root of alpha. But we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this is something different from the identity function. We have a square root of x here. When we differentiate that, we're just going to have 1 over 2 times the square root of x. We say minus the square root of alpha. The derivative of that will just give us 0 because alpha is, in fact, a real number. Okay, so let's see what we have in the denominator. 
Well, the derivative of the natural logarithm of this will just be 1 over that. So we are going to have this uh, minus this e to the power of the square root of alpha. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. Well, this is the exponential function. When you differentiate it, it stays the same at first, except when we multiply it by the derivative of the power. So the derivative of the power or the exponent here will just be uh, 1 over 2 root x because that's just the square root of x. Okay, so notice what we have. We see that um, some things will cancel out nicely, all right? This term here, uh, 1 over 2 root x, will cancel out with this. So we are going to have this to be 2 times the limit, all right? As x approaches alpha from the right of, well, we are going to do division of fractions here, which means this term will go up. That will be e to the power of the square root of x minus e to the power of the square root of alpha divided by, you're going to multiply this by that, that will be e to the power of the square root of x into the square root of x minus the square root of alpha, right? Okay, that's nice, isn't it? So let's see what we have. Well, when we approach alpha from the right, let's look at it again since we are done applying the L'Hopital's rule to see if it's going to give us something nice. As we approach alpha from the right, e to the power of the square root of x will be approaching e to the power of the square root of alpha from the right. Their difference will be approaching zero. That is, the limit will be equal to zero, right? And the denominator, what well, we substitute here because this is where we can actually have a problem. When we substitute it here, it's going to give us what well, the square root of x will be approaching the square root of alpha from the right their difference will be approaching zero. So zero times whatever will just be zero. That is, in fact, um, an indeterminate form of, of the form zero over zero. So we need to apply the L'Hopital's rule one more time. And we can apply it more than once, right? As many times as possible. So that means that this limit will be the same thing as two times the limit. As x approaches alpha from the right of, what well, we are going to differentiate the top and then differentiate the bottom and then see what we have. So let's differentiate the top and see. Well, the derivative of e to the power of the square root of x, which we've done, was it here? Yeah, will be, uh, let me put the fraction line, as I said, I've forgotten how I call it. Um, when we differentiate this, that will give us 1 over 2 root x, okay, times uh, e to the power of the square root of x. So you notice this is an exponential function, it stays the same when differentiated, but you have to multiply by the derivative of the exponent. So we divide that by, and notice this is just a constant, so the derivative of that will just be zero. We divide this by, we keep this, let's, this is a product of two functions, so we keep one and differentiate one at a time. Well, when we keep this one, we differentiate the square root of x, we're going to have 1 over 2 root x, right? And then we multiply it by the first uh, part of the function which we kept. And then we are going to add this, which we are going to keep this part and differentiate that part. So we're going to have 1 over 2 root x, all right, times e to the power of the square root of x. And then we multiply by the part we kept, which is uh, the square root of x minus the square root of alpha. Okay, so... It's okay. It's not really at the center, but it's fine. So let's see some things. We'll cancel out nicely. And um, when we cancel things out, we see what we have. So notice this and that. This will cancel out with that. And of course, this also, we can cancel this out. This is very nice because here we will just have one left, okay? After canceling, one will be left there. That means this is going to be the same thing as two times the limit. Okay, so let's write this down. Two times the limit. As we approach alpha from the right, okay? As x approaches alpha from the right, uh, that is showing, she's trying. Uh, for 1 over, the numerator will just be 1, divided by this term, this place, everything has been cancelled, so we'll be having 1, not 0, just 1, right? So this will be plus, what well, the square root of x minus the square root of alpha. So after cancelling things out, in fact, I would like to cancel what I wrote earlier, except to the last line, they just be cancelling things, all right? And then we are going to substitute this, and then we see if we will still get an indeterminate form. Of course, it's not possible, because of course, this numerator is already a non-zero number. So let's clean this and see what we have. Okay, so this is what we had from the last part of the board. Of course, this is it here. Now, you notice that as we approach alpha from the right, okay, the numerator stays the same. This is just going to be 2 times the numerator, okay, divided by, well, um, 1, okay, 1 is independent of x, so it will not be changing. This right here will be approaching alpha from the right, meaning that their, their difference will be 0. That is, the limit of their difference will be 0, so we just have 2 over 1. So, in fact, the limit of the function g of x is equal to 2. But that is not the end because we need to look at sine of pi over 12 times that limit. So we, that means that sine of pi over 12, okay, times the limit as x approaches alpha from the right of g of x will be sine of pi over 12 times 2, which is sine of pi over 6, okay? Well, sine of pi over 6 um, is in fact the same thing as 1 half because pi over 6 is 30 degrees and then... Um, 
which is sine of pi over 6 is 30 degrees, which is just one half. So in fact, the limit gives us just one half. Okay, so that's the value. That's what we asked to find. So this is a nice place to stop, right? All right, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, share this video with your friends and let me get some other questions from you, all right? Okay, see you in our next video.